<laughs> Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibe for all you. And we're going to do some geography now. And this one is Liberia. Uh, somebody actually suggested this to me. So, uh, you know, I'm going to leave the link in the description as usual so you can go check out the uh, geography now. They got some cool. Uh, uh, sort of historical but more like sociological look at countries and stuff like that so let's go ahead and youtube and sim simmer and see what this uh liberia vibe is all about all right my fellow american geographies america do you realize that our country kind of has like a long lost estranged african stepson yeah we really need to like visit and follow up with him more because we kind of did in a sense create him i'm just saying Ah, this is going to be interesting. Hey everyone, welcome to Liberia, the U.S.'s little experimental African resettlement project and one of the only two nations in Africa that never got colonized. I beg to differ. Okay, you tried to colonize us for like five years, but that doesn't really count for colonization. In many ways, Liberia is incredibly unique on how it became the way it did. No other African state has their type of story. And it all begins on a little place called the Peppered Coast. Let's begin. <laughs> That light is really, okay, really hot. Unfortunately, my first impression of Liberia came from the movie Lord of War, in which, like most Hollywood movies, portrays Liberia in a complete war-torn mess. On top of that, the whole Ebola crisis happened, which made things even worse, which is why Liberia is like the perfect place to visit right now. I have to ring Tripster Bell once again. Everybody still thinks this place has Ebola, so they try to avoid it, which means no annoying tourist crowds. The exchange rate is amazing. You could potentially have like an entire beach to yourself. People are friendly and like nobody knows about it. It's like Africa's best kept secret, which I just ruined. Oh, shoot. First of all, Liberia is located in West Africa, bordered by Guinea, the Ivory Coast, and Sierra Leone, as well as the Atlantic Ocean to the southeast. The country is divided into 15 counties, with the capital Monrovia, which, by the way, is named after American President James Monroe, located in the upper west coast of the country. By the way, the flags of the Liberian counties are notoriously famous for being kind of funny looking. CGP Great does a great podcast explaining how they kind of look like they were made out of Microsoft Paint. We'll talk more about it on Flag Friday. The largest cities after the capital Monrovia are Barna and Kakata. <laughs> There's a place called Sass. Town. The two busiest international airports are Sprigs Payne, which is literally like downtown in Monrovia, and Roberts International in Harvell, which is the airport most people arrive in when flying to Liberia from abroad, even though it's about 25 miles or 40 kilometers away from downtown Monrovia. Otherwise, you might be better off hitching a boat ride along the coast to one of the four main harbors, Monrovia, Buchanan, Greenville, or Harper. <laughs> Those towns sound so American, Greenville, Buchanan, oh, these guys. Otherwise, some notable places of interest might include the strange rock formations in Sass Town, the giant footprint in Pinyan, the National Museum, Centennial Pavilion, the, Central oh. Pavilion, the Lofa Rift, okay. surfing at Robert's Spot, okay. National Park, Mamba Point Arts Ooh. District, Mibasa Eco Lodge, Kapatawi Waterfall, and Chimpanzee Island in Marshall. And the best part is, there's like nobody crowding around these places. Hey, Ken. Yeah? Go on your phone, put a sky scanner, check out flights from LAX to Monrovia. How much do flights cost? Can you guys move on to the next segment, please? Some people want to learn stuff. <laughs> Tell me how to do my job. So anyway, Liberia was originally called the Pepper Coast by the Portuguese when they spotted the Malagueta peppers that grew there. First of all, the country is made up of three main physical regions, the flat coastal mangroves and swamps and valleys, the small rolling hills inland, and the tallest peaks in the North Lofa County, where you can find the tallest mountain, Mount Utebe in the Guinea Highlands. Nearby, the longest river, the St. Paul, comes from the Guinea border, meandering all the way to the Atlantic by Monrovia, which is a skip away, you can find the largest lake, Lake Piso, a brackish water lake. Brackish water, what does that mean? No, explain. Uh, all right. In the world of water bodies, the body water that contains any level between 0.05 to 3% salinity is considered brackish. In the case of Lake Piso, a small inlet, it connects the ocean, allowing salt to enter. Awesome. Great job, Noah. Yeah, no problem. Oh, actually, you made a mistake. The Longas River isn't actually the St. Paul. It's the Kabbalah River that goes along the border with the Ivory Coast. Oh, okay. Yeah, you no, know, that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. Just... Okay. How about this? I'll just walk out of frame. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. All right. <laughs> These guys are silly. It rains a lot in Liberia. They have a saying in Liberia, by the rain or by the sweat, either way you will get wet. Where have I heard that before? Uh, by the rain and by the sweat. Right? You're going to get wet. <laughs> get wet.
basically, Liberia has two seasons, dry and wet. But even in the dry season, it's still incredibly humid, so you're never going to be completely dry. Resource-wise, Liberia is kind of like a jackpot country, even though they only have one national park, Sapo, the second largest tropical rainforest in West Africa. However, the national animal is, no shocker, the lion. The lion? the lion. Even the UK took the lion for some reason, and lions have never, like, naturally inhabited that area anyway. Speaking of animals, let's address the elephant in the room, Ebola. Ken, was that joke distasteful? Nah, I'd say you just barely grazed past the boundary. Good enough! Yes, during 2014, there was an outbreak of the virus with thousands that ended up dying. After months of pretty much quarantining and treating the entire nation, the outbreak was contained, and after passing a 42-day time period, the nation was declared Ebola-free in January 2016 with heightened surveillance. Cool. The whole ordeal left Liberia stigmatized and economically shunned. This was not what they needed. Nonetheless, through some smart decisions, they moved forward and continued rebuilding. Unemployment is only at about 3.5%. Wow. Timber and rubber are at their highest. GDP growth has overall risen, peaking at 9.4% in 2007. See, they, they pretty much were left to their own designs and they just went ahead of the, of the business of rebuilding. You know, not a large bit of tourists. I wonder about the, who invests in that country. Let me see if he's going to talk about any of the natural resources to see who is secretly in there trying to dig their way in. And by 2011, they became one of the fastest growing 20 economies in the world. Wow. They even dramatically reduced their external debt through commercial debt relief from 4.5 billion to 222 million. That's wow. like deleting 17 eighteenths of your debt. That's like Noah deleting my weight and replacing it with this messenger bag. Good for you, Liberia. Granted, they still need to do some work. Blackouts are not uncommon, and infrastructure and civil engineering projects are still in progress. But for a country coming out of two civil wars and Ebola, not bad. Oh yeah, we usually talk about food. Food! Now, as a nickname hint, Liberians are famous for making their food spicy. They love spice. It's even said that people all over, but especially from the crew tribe, put small bits of pepper in their kids' noses and mouths to kind of get them to build a tolerance. All right, that just about covers that. Moving on to my favorite part, the... <laughs> The strongest trait for Liberia would have to be its story. It was like an experiment that actually ended up working, then kind of got glitchy, but then rebooted. First of all, the country has about 4.6 million people and is the only African state to have gained independence without major revolt. The largest of the groups in Liberia are the Capelle at about 20%, the Basa at 14%, the Americo Liberians come in third at around 11 the Gribo at about 10%, and the rest are made up of most of the remaining 12 tribes, plus a few other non-Africans. They use the Liberian dollar, but accept US dollars. They use the A, B, C, and F out and they drive on the right side of the road and they are one of the only three countries in the world that uses imperial units instead of metric just like the u.s and myanmar yeah it's just us three against the world we're in this together guys Woo! even though recently they've considered transitioning into the metric system oh no you don't get back on over here in liberia the official language is english but only about a fifth of the country speaks it properly it's more common to hear liberian colloquia which is like a mashed up creole-ish type of language that incorporates words from various tribal languages for example pem pem biggity shop Noko, and one of my favorites, Swima. It's been said that a standard American English speaker can listen really hard and maybe pick it up in about two weeks. Well, and they always track extra sounds like O or Ya on words. Right O, not bad O. Ya, hello. It's kind of like Singlish with Lo or La. Man, Liberia, you guys have a lot in common with Singapore. Like, have you ever met Singapore? Like, here, here, talk amongst yourselves. Like, yeah, yeah, hey, say hi to each other. As mentioned, Liberia has 16 main tribes. Each speak their own language and dialect, specializing in their own unique customs and trades. For example, the Kisi tribe is famous for being rice farmers. The Day are known for being salt traders and carving wood masks. The Basa are like the people of the forest and they're good at hunting. The Capelle are the largest man. tribe that historically became... Man, he, st he start getting into the, the deep... That's what I want to see. Them people up in the jungle and thing. That's what I want to see. That's where you're going to find more traditions. Let's continue. There's that picture, like a nice little rainforest jungle thing in the background there. That's what I want to see. I wonder what kind of animals they have there. Tribes, so there's kind of like that stigma that they don't like having. The Vi are the people from the Mali Kingdom that actually created their own script, making it one of the few indigenous African writing systems. The crew are masters of sailing and fishing. Many work for the Coast Guard. The Mandingo and Geo and Mano tribes are like the Muslim Mandingo. tribes. And the Grebo are great fishermen. Now here's the interesting part. One thing that makes Liberia stand out from the rest of Africa was that the nation, at least in modern times, was resettled by freed slaves that were initially brought from the U.S. and Caribbean in the mid-1800s by the American colonialization 
society. Okay, get ready because I'm about to go into story mode. Basically, if you were a freed slave in the US in the mid 1800s, you had two choices. Stay as a disenfranchised individual and hope that over time society would get better for you. Or you could take your chances and sail to Africa and create your own society run by you and other freed slaves funded by nice. the US government. In 1822, the first ship set sail and over four decades, over 13,000 freed slaves were returned back to Africa and an entirely new people group, the Americo Liberians were formed. Some of whom were mixed race children of slave owners that had privileged upbringings and educations. It was strange though, because essentially these new African American colonialists were returning back to the continent of their ancestors, which was completely foreign to them. They didn't initially get along with the indigenous people groups and for a while clashes and fights broke out. Eventually the Americo Liberians took power as the elite. They built their own infrastructure and government based off of the US system of legislation. They tried to build schools and churches to help integrate the natives. And after decades, they finally gave birthright citizenship to the tribes. So in a sense, historically, there's always kind of been like this rift between the natives and the colonialists. Tensions eventually led to the first and subsequent second civil wars in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, caused by natives backlashing against the Americo Liberian elite. Eventually, peace deals were signed. The most free and fair elections took place. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, a Harvard trained economist, won the presidency and became the first female president in all of Africa. And then George Weah was voted in to follow after her. The majority of Liberians, around 85.5, identify as Christians, mostly Protestant, although indigenous belief systems are also practiced and sometimes synchronized, whereas about 12% are Muslim. Oh, and one more thing, from what I've been told in Liberia, everyone likes to bluff, flaunting expensive clothes and accessories. They all have like the newest cell phones, even if they live in shanty houses. They even have a word for it, cheeky. Hey, but you know, we're all kind of guilty of trying to show off for making an impression to people. Last of all, a few famous people from Liberia or of Liberian descent might include people like Martin Delaney, Chris Bondi, India Ari, Saren Kaba Jones, Tom Bahali, maybe Oprah Winfrey, Kat Graham, and Louis Gossett Jr. A lot of those people though are like Americans of Liberian descent, but eh, I guess it still kind of counts. Speaking of America and relations with them. Liberia is kind of like that kid playing on the swings that you walked up to on the playground because you wanted to say hi, but then the moment you got two feet away from them, they fall off and break their arms screaming in pain. So you're like, oh shoot. Uh Hi, are you okay? First of all, within Africa, Namibia showed huge appreciation for Liberia's support for their liberation efforts and offering Liberian passports to help students study abroad. The Namibian Defense Force also stops by and stations themselves occasionally in Liberia. Sierra Leone and Guinea were like the really close cousins that suddenly got really mad because that one thing that happened in the 80s that they never really forgot, and by that I mean President Charles Taylor. Although issues have settled, they still kind of remember it and hold it against them a little bit. India really started to love Liberia after they gave their full-fledged support for India's stance on the Kashmir dispute. In return, President Sirleaf was invited to India. They struck up multiple export and investment deals in things like engineering equipment, pharmaceuticals, and steel and plastics, which increased India's investments in Liberia by four times. When it comes to their best friends, though, Liberians always kind of go back to their 1800 roots and say the USA. Sometimes they even call themselves Little America, and the statement, we will become America's 51st state, has even been a slogan in some presidential campaigns. Many of their former presidents were even born in the US. Even though tensions were built up in the 80s and 90s, the U.S. is still the largest provider of investment and foreign aid, and they still take cultural and diplomatic cues from their stepdad. Overall, the two have a weird but somewhat functional relationship. In conclusion, nowhere else in the world do you find an African nation colonized by African Americans. It's just only in Liberia. Interesting, eh? Stay tuned. Libya is coming up next. No, that was interesting. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know much about that. Wow. Repatriation happened. Back to Liberia where the Mandingos are and things like that. Wow, that, that was really interesting there, you know what I mean? And uh they sort of got integrated. I I would I would really like to go there and meet a descendant of the African Americans that was uh, that moved there. And how come I don't hear uh, too many African Americans talking about that place? Especially with them being so economically stable. I guess it's because of Ebola. You, you know what I mean? You, you, you get these, uh, these stereotypes of places that totally, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe that's a good thing because look, they, they're doing decent. You know, I haven't heard much about them in the news lately. You know what I mean? They seem to be doing all right. You know what I mean? So sometimes I guess it's best to just leave people alone to their own uh, endeavors and they, they'll be okay. There's proof of it. 
I don't know how old this uh, video is, but you know, that is kind of cool. Good to learn. You know what I mean? And thing. I hope you guys learned something on there like I just did. In the meantime, y'all, link in the description. Comment down below. Tell me what you all think about this one. And you go out there, get to know a stranger, take care of each other. Cool, right?